Minnesota girls basketball has crowned two first-time champions in downtown Minneapolis. Will there be a third? We shall find out because it's the 3A championship game as the defending champion Minneapolis North Polars go for their fourth title since 1998 against the Wilmer Cardinals. I'm Jeff Grayson. Welcome to the Target Center, everybody, for the nighttime portion of Championship Saturday. It is a great matchup. We can show you how these teams got here. A little bit different fashion. Minneapolis North with that close win over Worthington. Wilmer got by Andover. Andover just won the third place game, defeating Worthington 59-50. to You know the teams? Now let's hear more about them. Here are game announcers, Anthony LaPanta and Janet Carvin. Anthony well, thanks very much, Jeff. It's an electric atmosphere inside the Target Center tonight as Minneapolis North makes their seventh state championship game appearance in the last eight years. Think about that for a moment before you let it sink in. Wilmer has never played for a championship with Janet Carvin and I'm Anthony Lopant. And Janet, not only do you have the familiar faces from North against the newbies from Wilmer, but it's the inner city speed and quickness against the outstate style of Wilmer where they like to shoot it from the outside. And Wilmer's been very well aware of Minneapolis North's success as defending state champions, but they felt that they should have been here last year. They were undefeated at 26-0, got beat in the section final, and weren't able to finish their business. So they think they belong here in this state championship game. Well, their head coach, Brad Atchison, is worried, and with good reason, I might add, about the Minneapolis North backcourt. He said, by this point in the season, you've seen all the things. You've seen every kind of press. You've seen the traps. But we haven't seen anybody as quick as these two guards. And let's not forget Johnson and Bronson playing in their 15th state tournament game together tonight. Incredible experience, incredible quickness, and teamwork and leadership. Tyree Bronson probably a little bit unheralded statewide in terms of her talent and future. But she has definitely put this team on her back at times and done, the, done it from inside and outside. Atchison's Cardinals advanced into the championship game by defeating Andover in the semifinals. An Andover team that had played very well throughout the season but was held in check by Wilmer. They shot only 27%. Wilmer was led by balance scoring four of their five starters in double figures in the semifinals. Well, you're seeing Emily Swaringa right there, number 23. She had three three-pointers from the outside to really give her team a spark. North is going to definitely key on her tonight. On the inside is Laura Nielsen. She's just a sophomore, but her presence tonight and assertiveness on the boards and offensively is going to also be something to watch. Nielsen will have her hands full with a North in Interior that is big and very physical. Big question might be, can North's big people stay out of foul trouble? Can Wilmer handle the North press? We'll answer those questions next. The Class 3A Championship is up next. Fox 9's coverage of the Minnesota State High School League's Girls Basketball Tournament is brought to you by U.S. Bank, home of the five-star service guarantee, and Menards. Save big money at Menards. Welcome back to the Target Center in downtown Minneapolis. The Class 3A championship game. Minneapolis North looking for their fourth state title. Wilmer looking for their first. Our Nissan key matchup tonight is in the backcourt. Maya Johnson, Emily Swaringa. They are both the official and unofficial leaders on the team, the heart and soul of their team, and look for them both to lead the way. Johnson, 22 points in the semifinals. Outstanding. Made 7 of 16 from the field. Our Schmelz game plan for tonight. Well, I think for Wilmer, it's going to be a question of how they handle that press. Trying not to do too much. The unforced errors where they're going for too much against North will certainly cost them. For North, being patient on offense is so important. They have the talent, but they have to make sure that they wait and look for those good shots. They've got the big girls, Tanika. Massey on the inside, they could look for some high percentage shots. And lastly, to look at Massey on the inside against Nielsen, the big girl battle. I think whoever wins that will definitely be a factor in tonight's game as well. Now it's time to meet the players for both sides. And for that, we check in with public address announcer David Giles. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We welcome you to Target Center and to the 29th Annual Minnesota State High School Girls Basketball Tournament. This game is for the Class 3A State Championship and it features the Section 5 champion, the Polars, from Minneapolis North Community High School. And the Section 8 champion, the Cardinals, from Wilmer High School.
First, we would like to recognize the reserve players for both schools. First, the reserve players for Minneapolis North. And here are the reserve players for Wilmer. Now let's meet the starting lineups for tonight's championship game. They will be introduced alternately starting with Minneapolis North. At forward, five foot nine inch senior number 21, Harris Williams. At forward for Wilmer, a 5 foot 11 inch senior number 31 Lindsay Saunders at forward for the Polars a 5 foot 9 inch junior number 33 Daria Frazier at forward for the Cardinals a 5 foot 11 inch senior number 41 Tina Rytel At center for North, a six foot three inch senior, number 50, Tanika Massey. At center for Wilmer, a six foot one inch sophomore, number 53, Laura Nielsen. At guard for the Polars, a five foot 10 inch senior, number 22, Maya Johnson. At guard for the Cardinals, the five foot one inch sophomore, number five, Andrea Brown. At guard for North, a five foot eight inch senior, number 32, Tyree Brunson. And at guard for Wilmer, a five foot seven inch senior, number 23, Emma, Emily Swearinga. The head coach of the Minneapolis North Polars is Faith Patterson. The head coach of the Wilmer Cardinals is Brad Atchison. The officials for this Class 3A championship game are Dave Denniston, Tom Westland, and Deb Weinrice. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please rise? And join this evening with Erica Runge, a senior at Martin County West High School as she leads us in our national anthem. from Martin County West with our national anthem. Let's take a look at the Car Soup starting lineups as we get set for basketball here in the Target Center. 
Williams, Johnson, and Bronson for North. Inside, it's Daria Frazier and Tanika Massey. For Wilmer, a lot of pressure tonight on their point guard, Andrea Brown. She's joined by Emily Swaringa in the backcourt. Saunders and Rytel up front. And Lauren Nielsen is their post player, averaging just about 14 points a game. The Polars in white, Cardinals in red, and we are underway. Half controlled by North. We talked to Faith Johnson before the game. Faith Patterson, I always go refer to her maiden name because I've known her for so long, but the, she talked about how they never thought they'd be in this position to play for the state championship. There's Massey on the weak side, getting the board and putting it up and in, and here comes the North Press, Anthony. They started their season 0-3. A couple of forfeits because of an ineligible player, and also a loss to Hopkins, and so they've... Uh, Come a long way, had a lot of ups and downs this season, and I think that's probably why it's even sweeter this year for Faith Patterson. Rytel hits a big three for Wilmer, and boy, an early basket goes a long way toward building confidence when you're the underdog. Cardinals lead by one just about a minute in. Tina Rytel is a senior, and she likes that long shot. That opened the eyes of Faith Patterson in Wilmer's semifinal when he said, she said, I was amazed at the confidence with which the Cardinals shot the ball. Johnson, penetration, the jump stop, and the finish, north by one. Cardinals so far have not had trouble with that north press. Rytel in the corner. Swaringa. Harassed by Johnson. Swaringa drives. Fouled. Will they get Johnson or Massey? It looks like Massey. And free throws coming for Emily Swaringa. An 82% foul shooter on the year. Emily Swearinga not getting much room on those perimeter shots. They know about her three-point shooting as well, but that was Massey. She needs to be a little more careful, Anthony, not to come out and start carelessly fouling. Her presence is important in this championship game. Sometimes just approaching a player and making sure you're contesting the shot and getting your hands up, especially when you're 6'3", like she is, is uh, be enough. Swearinga just 5'7", taking the ball up against a 6'3 girl. Missed them both. Rebound Massey. Remember Massey, Frazier, and Charmaine Cross all got themselves into foul trouble in North semifinal win. Massey forced one up over Nielsen. No good. Rebound controlled by Saunders for Wilmer. A cardinal turnover. They're first. Wilmer seems to be fairly relaxed coming out tonight. Now that's a mistake right there but at least they're looking to push the ball up the court and sometimes you can catch get something easy there's Brad Atchison nine years at Wilmer longtime coach though he's been inducted into the coaches hall of fame he's won a state championship with Midwest Minnesota Johnson no good rebounded by Swaringa and he had such an even keel approach to this game he said hey we might get rattled early we're going to turn it over a few times early. We just need to weather that storm and be within striking distance at halftime. So I'll burn my timeouts in the first quarter if I have to in order to just make adjustments, help get our feet on the ground here in this final game. Rebound out of bounds. Last touch by the Cardinals. We talked about eight straight appearances by Minneapolis North. There's been many coaches here at the state tournament who over the years have thought to themselves, now, if I were in that position, how would I devise something to go up against Faith Patterson and her girls. Believe me, many coaches have left here trying to figure out ways to do it. Massey, no good. Offensive rebound for Williams. Bronson for three. Missed badly. Rebound Saunders. We talked about patience on offense for North. They need to make sure they get good shots, and that shot's probably not the best one for North.
Brown inside. Saunders no good. Rebounded by Massey. Saunders ran into a wall and Massey kind of lost her balance there. Johnson. That's by Brown. Massey from 15, in and out. Harris Williams with another offensive rebound, and she's fouled by Rytel. Rytel letting Williams slip in there for the offensive rebound. She's probably one of the best offensive rebounders on this team, and a lot of small colleges giving her some looks right now. First free throw, no good. Williams has not been a big offensive threat in this year's tournament. She scored just one point in the two games. She gets one of two right here. Just about halfway through this first quarter, the Polars lead by two. North on top by two, just about halfway through the first quarter in this Class 3A championship game. Lakeville and Hopkins will battle later tonight for the 4A championship. Roy Espolk into the Wilmer lineup and brings it into the front court. Turnover by the Cardinals as Robel tried to force one inside. Second turnover by Wilmer. This is the freshman with the basketball, Marika Carlisle. I was really impressed with her the other night. There you can see her taking the ball to the basket. Doesn't go. She really provides a spark for North, and there's another turnover. Three turnovers by the Cardinals. The North defense has forced 39 turnovers in the first two rounds of this tournament. Johnson, a deep three, may have been tipped, and it's out of bounds to North. North the other night came out, Anthony, shooting real well from the outside, and Maya Johnson is sure capable of hitting those shots, but it, uh, I think you want to start trying to at least get the ball inside first. I always think it's best to build your offense from your inside out. And they certainly have had some good drives, but look at that young lady down there posting up. That's a good shot. Another offensive rebound for Paris Williams, her third of the quarter. North on top by four. Cardinals have used Nielsen very well to beat that press. Using her height, provide them the good outlet pass. Three-pointer no good, but Swaringa tracks down the rebound. Rytel airball for three, and Johnson with the rebound. Johnson drives by Swaringa, oh. shovels it inside to Massey for two. What a pretty play. You've got to respect Maya Johnson when she put the ball on the floor to dribble, but she just shoveled it off to Massey for easy two. Six-point lead for North. Wilmer made their first shot. They've missed the last five. Nielsen with the offensive rebound. That's no good. And Paris Williams has another board. Frazier down the baseline. No good. Rebound for Robel and a foul called against Frazier. North starting to pull away. 145 remaining first quarter. They lead by six. Six point lead for Minneapolis North. Heading down the stretch in this first quarter. Brown trapped in the corner and we get a tied ball. This is the first time that North's been able to get the trap set in this press. Cardinals have been able to beat it with ball movement. 
throughout the first quarter. Well, Andrea Brown, just five feet one, is not going to be able to get the ball up and over a couple of six-footers that are trapping her, but she's got to make sure she gets rid of it before that trap occurs. Well, Faith Patterson said that we'll take advantage of that matchup. Floringa hits a three. The polar lead cut in half, and it's now a three-point margin. A travel called against the freshman, Carlisle. Well, Wimmer's showing a little more aggression there, too. Even just that press, even though it's not a real hard press, the presence of it can make a difference. There's Swaringa from the perimeter. That gives them a lift, trailing three. Want to attack Brown when she has the ball. Rytel, the runner, no good. Massey rips away the rebound. Johnson back in the lineup for North. Oh, good defense Lost it to Brown, and she calls a timeout with 30 seconds remaining. What a heads up play that was. Ty Ray was thinking about going, and then she said, ah, I better hold up here. And as she crossed over, she just bobbled it a little bit, and there's Nicole Brown getting a hold of it, calling timeout, ref. That was the matchup that Faith Patterson wanted to exploit. She said, if they're going to play us man-to-man -man and Brown's on the floor, we'll post up our point guard. We'll let our point guard go one-on-one, -on -one, create mismatches, so Brown's a nice player, but she's limited by her size. Only 5-1. And I think right there, Bronson may have just tried to force it when it wasn't there, but that's the matchup that the Polars are looking for. Andrea is a, is a fine job at the point position. Excellent defensive player. Also plays tennis and softball, but really understands positioning so well. But you can't change your height, that's for sure. Turnover by the Cardinals. Swaringa with a foul, and this will send Byers to the line for Minneapolis North. Well, Swaringa want to make sure that she didn't get the layup, so if you're going to foul, you want to foul. Make sure that they're not going to be able to get a three-point play. Second free throw coming for Byers. That's good. And North leads by five. Less than 10 seconds to go in the quarter. Rytel harassed by Johnson. She heaves it up in desperation. And the buzzer sounds, ending the first quarter. After one at the Target Center, it's Minneapolis North 11 and Wilmer 6. <laughs> 11 6, Minneapolis North at the end of a quarter here at the Target Center. Now we move to the second quarter. Wilmer 2 of 12 from the field in that opening quarter. Both field goals, three-pointers, one by Swaringa, one by Rytel. North with five offensive rebounds. And they were three of four at the foul line. Those the key numbers in that opening quarter. Turnovers, four by Wilmer, two by North. Fires for three, no good. Rebound Swaringa. Nielsen double teamed. Swaringa able to recover. Well, this North defense isn't just a full court kind of press. They really 
are pressuring every pass, contesting arms in the passing lanes. And they do, they're probably taller at almost, almost every position here. Brad Epson has to be fairly happy where he's at right now. I think his team's not showing a lot of confidence, confidence offensively, but they're handling it pretty well. Rytel with an offensive rebound, but then she turns it over. Wilmer plays a matchup zone. It's a zone defense where they're covering areas, but they're they're also making sure that they're covering a person in that area. So they're constantly shifting and handing off people. And that's tough to defend. They're going to need to make sure they collapse a little bit better on Massey. She got the ball fairly easily inside that time. Six points for Massey. And it's a seven-point polar lead. Wilmer really hasn't made North pay for that press, even though they've beaten it. They haven't gotten layups at the other end. Brown can't get the roll. Nielsen with the offensive rebound. They're letting Brown shoot right now. They're not really covering her that closely. She almost hit that one, but Nielsen there on the weak side for the offensive putback. Massey fouled and will go to the line. Here's Leslie Nielsen. Just a sophomore. Having wonderful experience. This young lady right here, Tanika Massey, going to be playing college basketball at Loyola of Chicago. Transferred for her senior year to Minneapolis North from Minneapolis Edison. One of the leading scorers of the Metro even last year when she was at Edison. Probably sacrificed some personal individual success to be part of a successful team and program. She got one of two, and the rebound is out of bounds to Wilmer. It's Paris Williams that time, Anthony, who had her hands on it last. She's always looking for that offensive board. That's North getting away with a lot of contact here. Three referees is something new in the tournament. There's Williams with a steal, two on one. Myers to Bronson, and before the shot, Bronson is fouled. This is the first year in the state tournament they have used three officials. Some section, sections have chosen two on their own have three officials. It's more of an on an optional basis. Some city schools are doing it occasionally. They're worried about security issues in games, unfortunately, these days. Johnson with a pull-up from the baseline. Four for Johnson, and Atchison wants a timeout as North has stretched the lead to eight points. The biggest margin of the evening. I think all things considered, Wilmer has handled the North pressure about as well as could be expected. But what they haven't done is get the ball into the front court and then attack when they've had the numbers advantage. Instead, they've just gotten it in the front court and then waited for the polar defense to catch up and be reset. That's right, and that's one thing that we learned from Worthington, that if you're gonna have a chance to attack North and draw them and possibly get them into foul trouble, you've got to attack them. Worthington did a super job, and that's really why they were in the ball game. There's Maya Johnson. She is up for Miss Basketball in the top five seniors in the state of Minnesota this year. Sweet move to the baseline, baseline jumper. And she has, uh, even though she's such a talented person, has gone through a lot. She tore her ACL lean in her knee, had knee surgery last July, and even has really suffered with some confidence issues in her recovery. And uh, so that's going to be a foul on Maya Johnson right there. It is, but it's what Brown must avoid. She cannot stand still with the ball as they try to beat this press. The ball has to keep moving, and those that can get away with it are those that are six feet tall. But the longer Brown stands with the ball, the easier she is to trap. Turing 
Kaminga for three. Short. Offensive rebound by Nielsen. Someone's guarding you that close, like Paris Williams, though. You've got to just drive by them. You can't allow someone to take your space like that. And Wilmer does look a little bit tentative offensively. I'm sure Brad Edison is trying to figure that out. Eight-point lead for the Polars. Polar cheerleaders see their team up by eight. Three minutes into the second quarter. Gets to be pretty big around Minneapolis North with their boys program being so strong over the years that I'm sure people just can't even physically get to all the games, whether it's boys and girls, to have two such, such successful programs. The same school. Oh, wait, Turinga with a steal. And a foul called against Johnson that will send Swaringa to the line for two. That's my second. Polar boys team, of course, state champions a year ago, but they were beaten in the sectional tournament by Minneapolis Henry. Henry also a state champion. They were defeated in their section final last night by Armstrong. You know, what a section that is. Oh, unbelievable. Osseo, Moundsview also in there. Section had won nine state championships in the last six years. A lot of those games they played in the section felt like state championships, I think. There's Massey, not even totally squared that time, but showing some nice soft touch from the baseline. Goes against Bronson. 15 foul on North right now. They have made a living off this full court press. Rytel lobs it inside. Saunders stepped on the baseline. So again, another trip down by Wilmer. A lot of energy and effort spent just getting that ball into the front court. And Brad Atchison says, oh, didn't even get a shot. Now, traveling violation will give it back to Wilmer. Samantha just getting the ball way too easily there. And if you're choosing to play behind her, it's going to be tough, especially she's really started out quite strong here tonight and has a lot of confidence in her turnaround jumper right now. Polar's on top by nine. Out of bounds to Wilmer, last touch by Maya Johnson. She didn't like that call. North playing 3-2 zone, covering the perimeter, covering those outside shooters. You got Rytel on one side, Swaringer on the other. Johnson with the board. Should take it close to post. Massey spins around Nielsen, no good. And Nielsen controls the defensive board. And no good, but an offensive rebound for Saunders. And tough play by Swaringa there to keep the ball in play. Wilmer down nine. A lot of standing right now with Wilmer. This is just not going to get them anywhere. 
dangerous pass against the Knicks. Brown shovels it inside. Wanted Nielsen, but Saunders was in the way. Good penetration. Swaringa for three, no good. It's her own rebound. Nielsen from 15, that's no good. And Swaringa with another rebound. Good job on the offensive board. Saunders, no good. Nielsen tied up, and the possession arrow favors Wilmer. Wow. We have a timeout at the target center. 155 remaining in the half, and it's north by nine. Number one hit in number one hit town in Minnesota. I was saying he was the number one hit. <laughs> Rytel. Tina Rytel trying to help her team shooting percentage. They're just before that shot, they were three for 18 in the game. Good hustle. And a timeout taken by Swaringa. I think you can call it a hick town if you're from the town. <laughs> That's right. you got to be careful with that one. Of course, these Metro kids think anybody out there is a hick, right? Right. <laughs> that is greater Minnesota. Good shout number, though. Half of my family is from Logan. Isn't that right? My wife's half. <laughs> Ninety-eight seconds remaining in the first half here, and North leads by seven. One, two, three. Brad Atchison hoped that his team would be within striking distance at halftime, and I think he thought that that would be a plus because they might get rattled by the pressure early. They haven't really been rattled by the pressure yet. They are certainly within striking distance. Well, every team has gone through uh, poor shooting nights. That happens to everyone as you go through the course of the season. You sure don't want it to happen during a state tournament game, but at the same time, they've done a fairly nice job on this handling the pressure. Gotta be patient. I'd like to see the guards look to penetrate those gaps a little bit more. Foul called inside that will give it to North. Is against Swaringa. Second foul. And with a vocal leader on the team, the captain. Into the forward position to more of a guard this year. By Robo. Williams, no good. Rebound Swaringa. Six boards in the first half for Swaringa. Had a solid semifinal. 13 points. Offensive foul called against Espo. She whirled around with her elbows and knocked Bronson to the floor. Good thing Bronson got him all started. I don't think it was anything intentional. I think Emma, that Joy was just trying to clear herself and take a look here. She was really crowded and as she came around, I think she popped, it, popped her with an elbow. In our, in our next game, we're going to see Caitlin Milamo from Hopkins actually broke her nose because her own teammate hit her in the nose. Tied ball and the rebound. Possession arrow favors North. Massey left alone. It's good. Big first half for Massey. 11 points. And North leads by nine. She has been the girl tonight. 
but she's had just too much time. That was a nice looking shot, but nobody there to even contest her. The horn sounds ending the first half with North on top by nine. And Wilmer had weathered that early storm to the point of being down just five at the quarter, but North continued to pull away slowly as the second quarter progressed. And Brad Atchison's squad is down nine. He's with Jeff Grayson. Jeff. All right. Uh, thank you, Anthony. I'm joined by Brad Atchison, Wilmer head coach. Coach, uh, your take on the first 16 minutes. Didn't really expect that defensive battle that we've seen so far, but you got to give the North kids a lot of credit. They've done a great job on Nielsen on the inside, and you know they've uh, given us some uh, nice looks from the outside, but we just haven't hit anything yet. You know we're capable of making those. We just got to shoot the ball better in the second half. What do you tell your girls right now? Well, I think the second half we got to be a little more aggressive on the offensive end. I think we got to put the ball on the floor and try to break down their defense a little bit. I think we're just maybe being a little bit too satisfied with that three-pointer from out there. We're not making it. I think we got to put some pressure on them and try to get down the lane and maybe, uh, you know, try to go to the basket and try to get them in some foul trouble and maybe uh, feed off to one of the kids down in the lane. But uh, we just got to take it to them a little bit more on the offensive end. Were they a little bit shaken by that pressure or? Do you think they're okay handling? I really thought that we handled the press you know, pretty darn well. Um, I, I want to be maybe a little more aggressive in the second half on the press. There's times when we could uh, maybe put it on the floor and gone to the basket a little bit, but we're a little bit reluctant to do that. They've done a nice job, I think, uh, we have the, the, the first half on that press. You know, we've been a second-half team all year. You know, we just got to stay focused, stay confident, and know we can uh, stay in this game till the fourth quarter. All right, Coach, good luck in the second half. All right, thank you. That's Wilmer head coach Brad Atchison. His team trailing at half time thanks to 11 points from North Tanika Massey. Back with more in a moment. <laughs> Minneapolis North on top of Wilmer at the break. The Polars lead by nine, 20 to 11 the score. They have led most of the way. The only lead for Wilmer came early at 3-2. Our Volkswagen fan cam shows us some happy fans from North. A great crowd on hand here from Wilmer for tonight's Class 3A championship game. In fact, they've filled their half of the lower bowl here at the Target Center and then some. And they've been enjoying themselves for this first half. Third place scores from earlier today. In Class 3A, it was Andover over Worthington. What a first season for Andover at the tournament. Just the second year that the school has had a varsity basketball program. The Nega Storm ref today, 15 points and five rebounds to lead the way. 20 and six for Maria Bover in a losing effort for Worthington. And in 4A, it was Woodbury over Osseo by a final of 63-55. So the Royals, who ended the regular season ranked number one, end up taking third place. The team that beat them will battle tonight for the 4A championship when Lakeville is battled with the other Royals from Hopkins. This season, the Minnesota Girls Basketball Coaches Association has inducted the following members into the Hall of Fame. Terry Culhane, longtime coach at Marshall, Tracy Milroy, Mike Chiquetto from Chisholm, Jim Lean from Walker Hackensack, and Roman, Ag Roman Agostovitz from the Star Tribune, who does such a great job running the Star Trib's high school coverage. Gave a little brief to the other Star Trib writers. I said, now you've got a little bit higher standards. You got a Hall of Famer in your midst. Roman, of course, is down the way tonight, covering this 3A final, in fact. First half, I thought Wilbur would be fortunate to be at the half down nine if they were forced into mistakes early. They weren't really forced into those mistakes, yet they're still down nine at the half. I think they just pushed a little too hard. They were passive, and you heard Coach Brad, Brad Atchison talk about it. Offensively, they just didn't seem to have the confidence to attack like they know they can. Uh, Leslie Nielsen won for five from the field. They really have to get her more involved and look for her to be a little more active in, in making some penetration and dumping off to her. They've got to have more than just two points from her. Well, they obviously didn't shoot as well as they would like in this first half. There's no question about that. A part of that is because of the shot selection. Early on, they got a big three from Tina Rytel, but in all, the Cardinals made just two of ten from outside the arc. Here's the other by Emily Swaringa. Minneapolis North was able to get to the basket, and Tanika Massey had a big first half for the Polars, a game-high 11 points. 
to go with four rebounds. I think they're going to have to make some defensive adjustments against Massey. She's just getting the ball much too easily. But look at those statistics, Anthony. Neither team really shooting great if you look at a combined 12 for 44 from the field. I mean, these teams are, are much better shooting teams than that. So I'm not sure if it's state tournament or state championship nerves or jitters, but let's see what happens in the second half. Everything else, though, fairly close. Those are cheap halftime statistics, and I think the points off turnovers significant because the turnovers aren't that different. Eight by Wilmer, five by North, yet the points off those turnovers, 8-0 in favor of North. And that goes back to what we talked about throughout the half. Wilmer seemed to be able to beat the press, but they didn't make them pay for the press. And the same with the turnovers. The turnovers that Wilmer was able to force did not result in layups at the other end. That's really true. And Brad Atchison talked about that, that they're going to need to attack a little bit more. And when they do have a turnover, you got to maybe sometimes push it up a little bit more. But North has such a reputation for blocking shots, for being so intense defensively, that you're almost kind of looking over your shoulder, wondering where they are and if they're going to come and get you to on defense. And this North team has been such a club of spurts. We talked about it a little bit Thursday night, compared them to some of the great North teams from the late 90s. Their ability to put eight or ten on the board quickly is their trademark. And I look for them to really come out and attack right off the bat here in the third quarter. And so Wilmer needs to be assertive, but they also need to hope that the, the referees are going to blow the whistle if there is a lot of contact as well. And then nobody in major foul trouble. We've got a couple players with two each, but uh, nothing there to worry about. We'll have the second half for you in a moment. This is the 3A championship game live from the Target Center on Fox 9. The spring babies are here. Come see them at the Minnesota Zoo. Weekends March 26th through April 18th. Point lead for Minneapolis North at halftime. And now Wilmer has the task at hand of trying to answer what was an outstanding first half for the bowlers. Minneapolis North. I know they appreciate the efforts of their head coach, Faith Patterson, but she, uh, during the tournament, has become the number three coach in terms of all-time tournament wins with 18. She follows only Myron Glass from Rochester Lourdes, who's got 25. Mike Dreyer from New London Spicer has 23, and Faith Patterson at 18. So congratulations to Faith. She's right up there with the, the legends. It's been quite a run for North, and we've thrown out these statistics that sound gaudy seven out of eight years they've been in the final game they've played on the final day all of those eight years because they were the third place team the only exception to be in the final four eight times in a row to be in the semi seven out of eight doing the final seven out of eight is really it is so amazing when you think about all the quality opponents that you face along the way and the fact that there are years where you just draw a tough first round opponent. I mean, it, it's really amazing. Here are some storied moments. Speaking of tremendous traditions, how about this one right here? Are you circling it? Yes. <laughs> Sorry, I stepped on your toes. Oh, that's you. okay. <laughs> that's Janet Carvin at New York yeah. Mills, three straight. Championships in the late 70s. One of the reporters on Press Row reminded me it's 25 years this year since we won our last championship. And I said, uh, thanks a lot. <laughs> 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 I knew it had been long. I didn't know it had been that long. That was the turnover there, unfortunately, for Wilmer. Swaringo with a double dribble. Bronson. Oops. 
quiet tonight. Rebound Nielsen, and you can see Wilmer trying to make an adjustment, push the ball up the floor a little bit. Right tell for three. Well, Tina Right tell started the first quarter out, and now she's starting out the second half the same way. Two for four from three point range for her tonight. Rebound Nielsen. That's for the Cardinals to cut into this lead. North on top by six. Dangerous cross-court pass. Here's the there you go. Brown's got to penetrate when she sees a wide open gap like that. And that's what I called, talked about on four stairs at the beginning of the, the game. But I don't really know if that term is proper in basketball. I always hear about it more in tennis, and I'm a tennis player now. But she's going for too much. You know, it's not that hard of a pass. Don't make it harder than it is. Well, in that instance, it almost looked like her own teammate defended it. She was looking for Saunders, and Nielsen thought the pass was coming to her, got her hand on it. But you have to create with that penetration, and that's something Wilmer did not do in the first half. The right idea. At least in the first couple minutes of the second half, uh, Wilmer definitely showing some signs that they're making some changes. And Robson hits a big three for North. And there it is at the other end. The penetration by Maya Johnson <laughs> through the defense, and then Bronson strokes the three. Bronson is so smooth. I mean, she can hit this shot at will most of the time, but yet she likes to pass. Nice showing that she can do whatever it takes. Record number of games, I think, played by a person 145 in her career here in the varsity crew. That's a lot of games as Nielsen answers. And that time, the Cardinals got a quick shot before they allowed North to get back defensively. want to spread the floor. Pull Wilmer out of that zone defense. Massey. Wow. She has been so effective tonight. But they, her teammates give them a lot of credit. They've been giving her the ball in places where she's in a good position to do what she does well and hit their short shot. Rytel as it poked away by Bronson. Brown got it to Nielsen, no good. And on the rebound, we get a jump ball that will go to North. Brown injured on the play. 5.02 remaining third quarter. We have a timeout on the floor with North on top by nine. We are back at the state tournament, state championship. They want to be circled. Who do I circle though? Do I circle all of them? I circle all of them. There we go. <laughs> I feel like Burt Blylevin. <laughs> You're a lot smarter than Burt. <laughs> These guys don't have a sign, but somebody's going to get squashed from the bottom of that pile. Sea of red. Cardinals need something good to happen. They're down by nine with 5.02 remaining here in this third quarter. Brown has gone to the bench after being shaken up on that last play. I don't see her on the bench. Do you? Is she? They might be taking a look at her right now. I hope she's going to be okay. I don't know how she got that pass over to Nielsen, but uh, Nielsen couldn't quite convert it, but I think trainers are looking at it right now. Johnson, that's a travel. She does such a great job once she gets that defense committed toward her to penetrate and create. Maya Johnson averages 14 points a game. She can really score a lot, though, so you've got to respect her, and that's what starts to open up everything for her teammates, and that's going to be a turnover. Back-to-back -back turnovers here traveling on Soringa. Boy, it was 
10 second call and they weren't even past their own free throw line yet. Five and done. Bronson for three. No good. Rebound out of bounds. Last touch by Saunders. One thing about the zone I think that's hurting Wilmer is that they're not, no one's really taking responsibility for Massey, especially on the offensive box out. She's just literally getting inside position almost every time that there's a shot from Minneapolis North. Here Johnson grabs a loose ball. She has six, and North has stretched the lead to its biggest point of the night, 11 points. There's a heads-up play by Maya, and here's a steal. Here's it, putting a couple plays together, and they want to keep building on it and keep that momentum going. to be a turnover by North. Johnson was tied up. That's the halfway point of the third quarter. Rytel will take it all the way and draws a foul. And that's a smart play by Tina Rytel to just challenge the North players to come on over and Stopper. Most dangerous person on the court, the person with the ball, and if no one's going to stop that person, you just take it all the way. Back rim, no good. Rytel has eight points tonight. Settled against Austin, just one for 11 from the field, so I'm sure it feels good to get on track. Nielsen coming up with it, but back to Bronson again. Massey can't get it. Johnson with the offensive rebound, and that's no good. Oh, Swearinga cannot get the roll. She's had a couple of those tonight where she's taking it in there hard and strong. It just has fallen out. Another foul against Charmaine Cross, her second. And Marika Carlisle, the freshman, will get set to return for North. But this is the kind of play that Brad Ashton was talking about. Wilmer did not do this in the first half. They were not looking to attack the basket. So definitely trying to make some things happen. Making these free, free throws is critical. Trail by nine. One out of two, rebound for Cross. Nine point lead for North. Myers no good on the three. And then she's called for a foul after Rytel came up with a loose ball. <laughs> We have a break here at the Target Center. Minneapolis North still on top by nine. Well, this ref, ref and official was not able to play in a state tournament. Her Hopkins Eisenhower team was defeated in the section final in 1978 by the eventual state champion, Bloomington Jefferson Jaguars, who went unbeaten that year with Laura Gardner. Went to star at the University of Minnesota, but Deb Weinreich played herself at Eisenhower, then at New Mexico, and also University of San Diego, and then played over in Europe for a while, but she, here she is, making her state tournament happen. Nielsen fouled inside by Massey, and she will go to the line. We see many former players that stay involved with the game by officiating. Well, and the former director of this tournament, Dorothy McIntyre, who was an associate director of the Minnesota State High School League for 30 years, recently retired. That was one of her missions, was to recruit officials, but also to recruit more women officials. And uh, I know a lot of women who are thinking about it and just starting to get involved, just to be around the game, enjoy the game, but maybe don't have the time to actually coach. It's a nice way to get some exercise and stay involved in basketball. Cardinals miss two free throws, but get an offensive rebound as it goes out of bounds. And 
here it'll stay in the possession of the Cardinals again. Nielsen forcing at that time. She's in a position where she's shooting a 12-footer. She needs to just turn and shoot it. Saunders, a lot of contact, no whistle. Nielsen with a rebound. Ten rebounds for Nielsen tonight. And a turnover, Espel. Swaringa comes up with a loose ball. Missed it twice. Saunders to Rytel for three, no. Nielsen with a rebound. Wow, are these girls getting offensive rebounds? So many shots at the basket before the turnover there. Final two minutes of the third quarter. Locking foul called against Espol. Her second. Joey right there. She's a 4-0 student. Hoping to be a college basketball coach someday. Kind of a backup point guard, but playing more now because of Andrea Brown's injury. Johnson drives and got it. Eight for Maya Johnson. You've got to cut off that baseline. That's just a rule in basketball. You have no help there if they get by you. Rice. Blocked by Frazier, grabbed by Johnson. here the final minute of the third quarter North started the half up nine they still lead by nine and now a foul called against Nielsen that will send Johnson to the line to shoot two we've watched this young lady now in the tournament since she was in eighth grade she's really just kind of grown up right before our eyes here in this state tournament she'll go to St. Louis University next year she scored a over 2,200 career points. It's been quite a run. Both she and Tyree Bronson came up together as eighth graders. Swaringo with a runner, no good. Johnson with the offensive rebound, missed it. And Rice has it, she's bumped by Johnson. <laughs> Goes against Catrice Williams, not Johnson. on top by 10. Wilmer turns it over again. It feels like a lot more than just 10 points in this game, though, the way North has really dominated on both ends. And they've had their share of turnovers as well. Here's Andrea Brown, the sophomore point guard who went down hard. Looks like a knee injury. That's a upsetting thing to have occur in a championship game. Johnson leans in and draws a foul. She will shoot two. Swaringa whistled for the foul. First free throw, no good. Johnson hasn't had a great tournament at the foul line. 
Missed again. Rebound Robel. Desperation heave is off. Three quarters complete here at the target center. And it's north by 10. Inside the target center. North on top of Wilmer by 10 as we get started on the fourth quarter. Quick timeout taken by Minneapolis North. <laughs> Janet Carbonen and Jeff Grayson. I'm Anthony LaPanta. Hope you're enjoying the game tonight. It's the first of two. We put the wraps on this 2004 State Girls Basketball Tournament. Lakeville and Hopkins will meet tonight for the 4A championship. North, of course, defeated Sock Rapids Rice in the quarters, and sectional final defeated a very good Orono basketball team. She's been named Section 5 AAA Coach of the Year five times now. I'm sure that never gets old. One of her assistants is her husband, John Patterson. He sits down a little bit farther on down the bench. I think those two have kind of almost adopted all these girls, too, and really helping them in their lives, just beyond, even beyond basketball. Athletics does that in itself. It's such a huge part of these high school students' lives whether they win championships or otherwise. The coaches are very influential people. Sometimes I think we're a little too hard on them. <laughs> Carlisle here will go to the line. Ball goes against S. Bolt, her third. Marika Carlisle, I'm sure, has uh, found her way onto a few college scouts' notebooks over the weekend here. I'm writing her down. Just a freshman, but shows incredible speed and quickness at the point guard position. One of two. Her first point of the night. North leads by 11. Gets the roll in the lane, her first basket. Nine point lead. Nice cut to the open spot there. Megan Robel with soft touch, but answering right back is Maya Johnson. 11 for Johnson. North by 11. on the bench getting some rest right now. Catrice Williams, number 52, in the game. Moringa traveled. A little too anxious on the drive. Massey's back in. Turn it over 15 times. Bowlers now, including tonight, 54 forced turnovers by their three state tournament opponents. Great dish inside to Frazier. That was a beautiful pass from Maya Johnson, making it easy for Frazier. But again, Wilmer's defense breaking down, getting that baseline drive. Johnson with a steal. Carlisle tracks it down. Last touch by Wilmer. Well, I tell you, Maya Johnson has taken over this game in the second half. Her ability to penetrate offensively has created baskets for herself, but also open looks for her teammates. And now another steal here. 
that she has dominated the second half. Timeout at the target center, 542 remaining, and it's north by 13. Well, it is a family affair for Minneapolis North. This is Ruby Johnson, uh, Faith Johnson Patterson's mother, and this is her little boy right here. This is John. He is three years old, enjoying a box of popcorn on the front row. <laughs> Cheering on his mom and his dad out there. They're coaching staff and all. Ruby, of course, had to watch Faith when she played for Marshall U back in 1976 and 7. I watched Faith when she was an eighth grader, and I was in the stands. Be the guard for Marshall U. Getting pretty intense out here. Swearing is going after it. A lot of intensity. These players, they both still want it. Obviously, 15 points is a big differential, but you can't expect Wilmer to quit either. Now, Wilmer is now out of timeouts, and I think they've used at least three and maybe four of them just to save turnovers. There down there after the timeout was called. Cardinals. Showed you the score a little while ago, excuse me, Janet, of that third place game, Woodbury defeating Osseo. Just a band event for, for Osseo ended an outstanding high school career with another solid game, 28.7 rebounds. She, of course, headed to the University of Iowa. Amanda Nislet had a Another fine game for Woodbury, as did Katie Cashney, each of them in double figures. We'll see Nislet again next year. She's a junior. I think Krista Van Deventer, though, uh, has to be one of the best post player in the state's true post for the University Agreed. of Iowa. Although, Miss Knight opted to play in the post, but she went head to head with Van Deventer for a good chunk of that game here on Wednesday and got the better of it. Well, Leslie Knight, we will have an opportunity to see the Metro Player of the Year in the next game coming up, the next championship, which is our 4A state championship. Hopkins and Lakeville. For those people who don't know about Leslie Knight, she is going to be a treat to watch. She will take her talents to the University of Minnesota next year. And it'll be interesting to see what position they'll have her play. At six feet, she can play inside and out. It's amazing the number of quality players Minnesota has grabbed from Minnesota over the last few years. Obviously, Lindsey Whalen is, has everybody's attention, but you have very good Minnesota high school players sitting on the bench right now or filling roles for them. It's quite a bit different than it was a few years ago. Oh, it's changed so much since Lindsey Whalen came upon the scene. Megan Roble really providing some spark here, trying to get her team going. She's a senior. She came up with that steal and got the ball over to her teammate, Joy F. Bolt. And there is number 23, Swaringa, getting her knee bandaged up. We had some blood out there, and that's always cause for concern. Johnson. Bronson. Massey off the feed from Carlisle. So Wilmer has had to come out in a man or player defense. And uh, that has really opened up a lot of things for the North players to look to drive more. And another turnover here. Johnson. Pump on the way. Five team fouls against Wilmer here in the second half. Frazier. Well, if the team's trying to defend their title, it looks like North might be the only one that's successful as we see yet another beautiful dish from Bronson Namassi, who finishes. Boston, of course, in the single A did not come back. 
Kitson Central represented that section after three state championships by Kelly Roizen and Boston. Let's take one more look at this beautiful pass, though, by Bronson. No look over to Massey. Tanika Massey with quite a state championship game. Rytel no good for three. Swaringa back outside, and Rytel travels. 17-point lead for North, and Rytel is really upset. Woodbury was beaten, the defending 4A champion. Lourd was beaten in the state tournament also, and North looking to defend that title. Yet another beautiful pass, just a little mishandled there. And Johnson called for a foul. But they do such a great job creating that passing lane down to the baseline. Johnson, Carlisle, Bronson, all three have made brilliant feeds to the low post here in this fourth quarter. And it helps when the posts have good hands and can catch those hard, crisp passes. One and one coming for Swaringa. Earns the bonus with the first free throw. So Brad Epson talked a lot about that motivation that they had to get back to the state tournament because uh, they thought they should be here last year after being number one rated almost all season undefeated. They, they wanted to do it almost for the seniors who weren't able to be a part of this team. They dedicated it to them and to themselves. He said they played 30 to 35 games together in the offseason and spent a lot of time in the weight room. And they've got to feel proud to have gotten to the state championship game. Down 15, it has just not been easy to muster any kind of a substantial rally, though, with the defensive pressure and the great offensive execution. Another, another layup because of Bronson's nice penetration and pass over to Matthews. A quick crossover, got her three in the lane. Great court vision gets Massey a layup. Megan Robel answering. Here's Carlisle. Takes the pass, missed the runner. Rebound, Frazier, count the basket. And she will go to the line, and you can sense that the Polars almost started the process of winning. Well, North is almost making it look easy right now, and there's Daria Frazier, the junior, getting the offensive rebound. She, this young lady has a future as well. Really nice skills. All-around game. We've seen a lot of talented players come to the North program. We talked about tomorrow more a little bit with Faith Patterson before the game. She's playing in the WNBA for Phoenix right now. And playing over in Europe during the offseason. France, I believe. Mari Harton playing in Russia, she told us. Right tell. There have been some great players during this run for North. Those two, obviously, two of them. But so many that have been a part of this championship dominance for the Polars. And right now, they lead by 17. 17-point lead for Minneapolis North. They had to battle to get here. Defeated a very tough Worthington team in the semifinals. And now their attacking defense has just been too much for Wilmer here in the second half. Carlisle for three. Good! And they're having fun now, leading by 20. You know, once North gets a lead and they become more relaxed, they become even more dangerous. I agree. They play with such confidence. Well, then they've got a little more, a big, a bigger margin of air, and they can just go for some more. 
another great feed. Johnson and Massey. You know, they play a lot like the great North boys teams that dominated back in the mid-80s and then again in the mid-90s, where once they would get a lead and start to play a little more freestyle, where it, it was almost like they didn't care if the other team got a basket because they knew they'd get one just as fast <laughs> at the other end. <laughs> There's some happy young ladies over there. Danica Massey was not a part of that championship team last year, so this would be her first state title. And of course, go back a few years, some of these girls uh, remember the teams of 98 and 99. The other two titles that Nora does have. Powell called inside after Nielsen came down with a rebound. Well, Faith Patterson has felt this year that her team was even better than in years past. Once they once they got their injury situation resolved, and even though they lost the first three games of the year, started out 0 and 3. Maya Johnson missed the first four games. She said that the balanced scoring that they've had and the inside strength of Massey has really taken her team to a new level. This young lady, Laura Nielsen, a 6'1 sophomore, has had just a beautiful state tournament, 26 points, 15 rebounds against Austin. She's got such good hands, soft touch. We we'll definitely look for more from Laura Nielsen in the future. Her fans giving her a round of applause. There's Rytel and Saunders, also seniors. Stolen away by Robel. Foul called inside. This will be free throws for Sarah Degree. This will be the second time that North has repeated as state champs. They did it in 98 and 99. And now 2003, 2004. Degree is also a senior getting to see some time on the floor. She went to Lake Superior College and said one of her thrills this year was beating Alexandria in the section finals. Alexandria always a strong program. One and one coming at the other end. Carlisle will shoot. Jessica Bananini with the foul. That's a name that will remind basketball fans of great basketball tradition in Wilmer. Paul Bananini was a member of the Wilmer State Tournament team in the 1980s. Good one. Are you old enough to remember that? <laughs> Just barely. <laughs> I remember seeing him play in the state tournament. Shanika Hall, they go to the floor, and Wilmer comes away with it at the other end. Robo for three, it's good. Megan Robo quite a, has had quite a fourth quarter. Faith Patterson was signaling for a timeout, didn't get it. Williams gets a layup. He again asked the official for timeout, but he didn't get it. He's just trying to get another substitute into the game. Degree blocked by Williams. Carlisle missed the layup. And a foul called with four and a half seconds to play. Here's John Patterson, Faith 
husband as we go down the bench. They're not smiling a whole lot yet, but they will be. And Faith Patterson said before the game tonight that you know I'm not a not an overly emotional person. I don't remember crying often at success, but this is one night where I may if we win a championship. It's been quite a run with these two special seniors, Maya Johnson and Tyree Bronson. She does some health issues too, and I think sometimes those things put life into perspective a little bit more and you savor the moments and appreciate the good times. And the Polars are champions for the fourth time as they successfully defend the 3A state title. Winning in style tonight. 56-39 the final. They took charge of this game early in the second half and never looked back. Wilbur never mounted a serious threat. Massey so tough inside. But I thought Bronson and Johnson's ability to control the flow of this game. They controlled the tempo. They took charge, both offensively and defensively, in the second half. And I think when you look at guard tandems in recent years, I can't really think of a one-two punch like Bronson and Johnson in terms of how they work together, feed off of each other, and again had that years of experience, both starting in eighth grade for Minneapolis North. If you think about all the wins, all the tournament wins. North team has had so much success here at state during this run they've won 20 of 24 games at the state tournament level and Johnson finishes her career with some of the most lofty individual numbers but I think it's some of those team numbers that really define this run for North and again, it wasn't an emotional season, a season filled with ups and downs. They had probably the most losses they've ever had in the championship year with eight losses on the season. But it's not how many losses you have, it's what you learn from them and how you move forward. I don't know how you replace the leadership of those senior guards that we're talking about, though, and that's something that's Keith Patterson will have to think about, and I think Marika Carlisle might have. I was just going to say, Marika Carlisle. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the award ceremony is a, is a big reason for it. Let's go to, to David begin. Giles. The award ceremony will be conducted by representatives of the Minnesota State High School League Board of Directors. They are Maggie Lambert of Winona and Sharon Early of Mankato. They are assisted by David Stead, executive director of the Minnesota State High School League. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we will present the 10-member Wells Fargo All-Tournament Team chosen by the sports writers and sportscasters covering this tournament. These students have distinguished themselves by their athletic excellence, leadership, team commitment, and exceptional sportsmanship. Presenting the trophies for the Wells Fargo All-Tournament Team Award at center court is Jason Scott. And now the 2004 Class 3A Girls Basketball All-Tournament Team. From Cloquet, forward, Samantha Battaglia. From Worthington, forward, Jill Hansen. From Worthington, center, Maria Bover. <laughs> From Andover, center, Melissa Shadell. <laughs> From Wilmer. Guard, Emily Swearinga. Oh, 
From Wilmer, center, Laura Nielsen. From Minneapolis North, guard, Maya Johnson. From Minneapolis North, guard, Ty Ray Bronson. From Minneapolis North, center, Tanika Massey. Also named to the all-tournament team and not able to be here for the ceremony from Andover, guard Danica Storm Ref. Wells Fargo and the Minnesota State High School League congratulates all members of the Class 3A Girls All-Tournament Team. Silver medals and the Class 3A second place trophy will be awarded to Wilmer High School. The silver medals will now be presented to each member of the team. Please step forward as your name is announced. Jessica Vandenindy. Katie Holmgren. Andrea Brown. <laughs> Megan Robel. <laughs> Haley Rice. <laughs> Amy Fullman. Joy Espolt. <laughs> Emily Swearinga. <laughs> Lindsay Saunders. <laughs> Haley Hansen. Tina Reitel. Sarah Degree. Shannon Junkie. Laura Nielsen. Assistant coach, Hal Miller. Thank you. Thank you very much. Assistant coach, Janine Beeler. Head coach, Brad Atchison. And now will the captains of the Wilmer team please come forward to receive the Class 3A second place trophy. Congratulations to Wilmer High School. Second place Class 3A girls basketball for 2004. The 2004 Minnesota State High School Class 3A Girls Basketball Champion is Minneapolis North Community High School. Each member of the official squad receives a gold medal. The gold medals will now be presented to each team member. Please step forward as your name is announced. Marquesia Cooper. Thank you. 
Shanika Hall. Marika Carlisle. Tasha Byers. Paris Williams. Maya Johnson. Tyree Bronson. Daria Frazier. Maya Buckner. Takia Stewart. Tanika Massey. Patrice Williams. Charmaine Cross. Student manager, Andrew Johnson. Student manager, Anthony Johnson. Assistant coach, John Patterson. Assistant coach, Michael Stevenson. Head coach, Faith Patterson. North team, the 2004 Minnesota State High School Class 3A Championship Girls Basketball Team, come forward to receive your championship trophy. to the Polars on another championship back to back for the second time in the last six years take a look at the all tournament team and this was this was a difficult choice there were several that were worthy this season Samantha Battaglia from Cloquet Hanson and Bolver from Worthington Shadell and Stormref from Andover Swaringa and Nielsen, who we saw tonight from Wilmer, and of course, Johnson, Bronson, and Massey from Minneapolis North. Fitting end to the high school careers for particularly Maya Johnson and Ty Ray Bronson, who have become regular names here at the state tournament. It won't seem quite right if Faith Patterson's able to bring the Polars back next year to have a lineup and a roster that does not include those two. But what a ride for Minneapolis North. You mentioned their slow start this season. And every time when you look at a championship team, regardless of the sport, probably regardless of the level, but particularly at the high school level, there's always at some point during the season a bump in the road where either you lose a couple of games, somebody gets hurt, you don't play real well. And you look at a playoff run, there's always that one game where you had to have something extraordinary happen for you to win, whether it was somebody to hit a big shot somebody to have a big night just winning a close game and north had all of that this year they really did they experienced so much and i think they grew together congratulations to both of these programs brad atchison wilmer ninth year for him also ninth year for faith patterson at north and in fact in our program there's a 10-year look back Faith Patterson was actually on a championship team 10 years ago when she was an assistant coach for Ray Finley at the Blake School. And Ray Finley celebrated a, a state championship today coaching the Breck School. And that was a 10-year look back. 
She was Faith Johnson then. Congratulations fact, to these girls. She and Ray both made comment about that yesterday when they said we were sitting there watching as we defeated Mike Dreyer from New London Spicer, who was playing in his fourth straight final. I said, boy, give me four straight finals, and I don't care win or lose. How can a team nicknamed the Polars be so hot every March? It's another repeat for the Minneapolis North Lady Polars. They are the 3A champions for 2004. Welcome back to Target Center, everybody. I'm Jeff Grayson with the stars of the show. We're going to start with Tyree Bronson. Tyree, congratulations. Thank you very much. What does this mean to end your high school career with a repeat? Oh, it means the world to me. This has been my ultimate goal. I remember I told uh, Coach Johnson before last season, I said, Coach, I'm not leaving without a back-to-back. -back. <laughs> we're going to work hard every year to get it, and we did it. Could you talk about the rapport you have with your teammates here, Maya Johnson and Tanika Massey? It seemed like the two of you as guards were really setting up your center pretty well. Oh, yeah, I love these guys, you know. We got to, me and Mike got to work the backcourt, feed, feed the big ticket in the middle. You know, just got to keep it going. Everybody got to get a little bit. Everybody got to get warm, get a good rotation, and we're in there. Is it uh, kind of sentimental for you as you bring this to an end, your high school career, before you go on to Creighton? It is. I've been in this program for five years. It's my fifth year, and I think this is the best way to go out. All right. Congratulations. We're going to talk to your teammates now. Tanika Massey, wow. Congratulations. What a difference uh, coming over to Minneapolis North for medicine. What's this like for you? Man, I'm just so happy. There's, like, no words to describe how I'm feeling right now. We've worked so hard this season, 